Christmas just around the corner, you might find an uptick in online sales. I recently sold this pair of fire pit tongs, and I need to ship them. One of the ways I keep my shipping costs down is I make my own cardboard boxes. I do that out of cardboard that I recycle, such as these U-Haul boxes, which we have several of from the last time we moved, or larger sheets of cardboard that came from some front porch furniture. I break them down so I can store them out of the way, flat against the wall, and just cut off large pieces whenever I need to make a box. I recommend any time you're going to do this, you put the company's logo, such as U-Haul, or in this case, whatever the furniture was, to the inside of the box, using plain cardboard on the outside. These are some of the tools that you'll need in order to make a box. I use a couple of rulers, one of them four feet, one of them two feet. I use an ink pen to mark one of these window screen rolling tools I use to crease the cardboard before bending. Some sort of cutting device. I'm using a utility knife. Some tape. And I use a cutting mat on my workbench to protect the surface and keep it from getting too torn up. If you have a rubber stamp for marking your boxes, that can also look good. To start, I like to wrap everything in bubble wrap. That way I can just protect the paint. You can buy your bubble wrap in rolls this size or even much larger rolls, but I find that size to be cost effective and easy to store. So the first step I do after bubble wrapping is I measure the piece that I'm putting in the box to get some dimensions for how large I'm going to make the box. This pair of tongs is 34 inches long with the bubble wrap. So I'm going to make the box 35 inches long. down as well because nobody likes to make a box that's half an inch too narrow or short. And I always take the actual product and set it in a safe place so I don't accidentally knock it off the bench. Now it's time to mark our cut and fold lines. And for this I'm using my rulers and the ink pen. I like to put a one inch tab at the end of the, the box that just folds over at the top and it's an easy way to keep your, your product held inside of the box and it's less likely to poke through your tape seam along the top of the box. So since this box is going to be two inches deep, I make a mark for my two inch mark. And since we're making the box 35 inches long, I mark at that point and the other two inches for my depth, and the other one inch for my tab. I do this on both sides of the box, and I just connect those lines with my ruler. You want to get fairly close with these, finding the sh a straight factory edge, something like one of these seams you already had, or one of the already cut seams. It's not joinery like doing woodworking, so if you're off a slight amount, it's not the end of the world, but it avoids a lot of hassle if you do it right the first time. I just connect those lines across.
these lines, this is where I mark my long lines. So we'll come in two and a half inches from the edge. Make a mark. Then our two inch depth. Our five inch width. Our two inch depth. two and a half, which the spots just happen to be just the right width, so our two and a half inch width on this side. Do the same thing on the other end. Now we just connect the line. End up giving us a grid where we're going to be cutting tabs and marking our fold lines. I've also found myself at times making boxes that are longer than the four inch ruler that I have. So, in that case, to get a longer straight edge. I'll use something like a framing square. And if I'm drawing a line, this edge and this edge line up so I can add an extra 22 inches of length of a straight edge. Saving money on a longer ruler. We need to cut our box. Be cutting our tabs, cutting the box to length first, and then cutting our tabs. This cardboard from this furniture is much thicker than the normal cardboard I use, so it's a little more difficult to work with. So, when cutting these lines, I've drawn a line here, but I always come in roughly the width of the cardboard towards the middle. sides to be vertical. have to put these tabs on the side. I just find it's, the box is a little more sturdy when you do. If you've ever worked in a shipping facility, you'll know that sometimes these boxes go through quite a lot of torment on their way to their final destination. So now we have the rough layout of the box. window screen tool to make our seams to crease them. I just run the tool along the lines that I've drawn, creating a crease. Like I said, this cardboard is a lot thicker 
and most of the cardboard I use, so this is very difficult to bend compared to regular, the regular stuff. If you press a little too hard, you can tear through the outside layer of the cardboard, which does make your box a little weaker, but it's not the end of the world. Just don't rip all the way through your piece of cardboard. scenes. Time to make, but a box this size kind of cost prohibitive if you're trying to make any money with the stuff you're making. So, two sides fold together, meet up, looks reasonably good. Finish this last end, and let's move on to some taping. Depending on the size of, or the quantity of boxes that you buy, if you're going to buy boxes this size, they can be pretty expensive. I think the last time that I priced one, it was six dollars just for the box. That was buying a single from a local reseller. your product, which has been safely stored out of the way and not damaged. Place it in, fully tape the box, put your label on, and it's ready to ship. Now that you have your product in a box, you need to actually pay for shipping. And if you've been to the post office at this time of year, you'll know that it's not always the best place to hang out. You'll be in line for quite a while if you have to buy your labels there. So what I always do is I just buy my, buy my labels online. And I do that through an account I set up through the USPS. And I have this fairly cheap kitchen scale. I just know my box's dimensions since I made it. And then I just weigh my package, 
this case it's 3 pounds 13 ounces. That way I know I can just go online, make my shipping label, print it off, take it to the post office and drop it off. I don't have to hang out in line nearly as long as a lot of people seem to do.